right there. Yeah, it sounds fine. To add a little bit more detail to it, we can um, add some turbulence. Just be careful with this. You just you want to keep it really low. If it goes above 0.1, I find it just starts smashing it around the screen a little bit too much. So 0.66 seems pretty fine. It probably can't notice it, but there is there is a difference in the way the fluid is reacting, and that looks pretty good to me. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And the next has a temperature, fuel, and color. We're not going to need any of those at the time being, just because we're not going to be playing around with the temperature or the fuel. So yeah. Um, next thing I'll quickly show you through is the shading tab. Um, at the moment, you've got transparency. So you just Increase how it appears. I'm just going to leave it where it was. Um, low intensity. This is good for flames. It um, just adds realism to them. And but we don't really need any of those at the time being. That's more just final polishing effects. Um, and we have the drop off. So basically, the drop off. What it does is, if we set it to zero it just hits the edge of the cube and bounces off it. This can look pretty unrealistic or make the fact that there's a container pretty obvious. This can be reduced by adding edge drop off. Uh, as you can see when it goes up to hit the top it will fade off like there's a gradient transparent gradient towards the top so kinda just gives the illusion that there is no container and it can improve the look of your fluids quite drastically, I've found. Um, next one we have here is color. It's deactivated for at the time being because we won't need to use it. Um, then we have incandes incandescence. Uh, as you can see, this is set to temperature and it has a flame gradient. So when something's hot or it catches a light, it will have similar colors to a flame. Um, you can also change this around, so change it to constant, so the constant color is going to be yellow. Um, the X, so as it changes X position, it changes color. The Y, so it should go from yellow to orange to black, and etc. What we are going to play around with though is the opacity. So just click and it automatically adds a point. Now you can move this around however you like until you get something that you feel looks appropriate. I'm liking that at the moment. Now the opacity is um, set to density. Once again, you can change that to Y gradient X. Um, you can change it to all of them really. The effects aren't really doing much, as you can see. So I'm just going to leave that at density. We also have the input bias. So if we move it more to the left, so it's going to move it more to the left of this where the opacity is very low. As you can see you won't be able to see much. Move it closer to the right where the opacity is a lot thicker. You will basically see a lot more of the smoke. I'm just going to leave that at zero because I was pretty happy with the effects that we were getting there. So yeah, the next thing you can go into is the quality. This is render quality, it won't change anything you see in real time here. Uh, but basically the difference between 1 and 10 is us. That's 1. That's 10. You can't really see much of a difference with 2D fluids, however with 3D fluids this can really improve the quality 
for if you're using a lot of colors but at the moment we just need that at one also go into lighting add a shadow um, but once again that's really only used for three-dimensional fluids we're only using 2d so there's no real shadow to be cast at all okay so we're just going to play blast that see what it looks like So here we are. At the moment I'm thinking there's a little bit too much swirl. As you can see they're just constantly spinning and it's kind of disorientating disorientating the fluid to the left a little. So just gonna go back up into dynamic simulate, contents details, velocity, change the swirl to about five and then I'm going to select my emitter and change the amount of density it emits to 3 per second instead of 1 and we'll play blast that see if that looks a little bit better pretty good I'm happy with that but as you can see it really is just trial and error just go through you tweak the attributes a little bit have another look at it see if it's what you want if it's not you go back in and you change it again until you get the desired effect um, next thing I'm going to walk you to is emitting from surfaces and making the uh, fluids itself interact with mesh so First off, I'm just going to make it interact with the mesh. So I'm just going to draw a sphere in the center in the center of my fluid container. And to select my fluid container, select my polygon sphere, go to fluid effects, add edit contents. Oops, sorry, I mean make. Um, go down and click make collide. Now uh, we'll play blast this. As you can see, the fluids are interacting with the sphere. However, the sphere is not all the way through. It would appear better if it was centered. I'm going to go back to front view, run the play blast again. And as you can see, the fluids are interacting with the sphere, bouncing off it. This can be a pretty useful effect and I have a fair bit of realism to be seen quite easily. so that's interacting with an object now I'll teach you how to emit from an object so I'm just going to delete that emitter as we don't really need it anymore I'm going to select that object that we did have I'm going to go to fluid effects add edit contents emit from object just going to select the fluid container first then the object and as you'll see now it from this sphere however seems to be